Okay, so welcome to our latest virtual bridge uh, session, and I'm delighted to be joined um, by Beth Winkler today from Edinburgh College, who is going to be talking about this move, this transition to online needs assessment. And I'm intrigued to see how that really works. So really, without further ado, over to you, Beth. Thanks, Kenji. What an introduction. Gosh. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, hopefully that's worked. Okay. Um, Kenji, can you just let me know if that's shared A-OK? -okay? It's all good. It's all good? Okay, great. All right. So today's plan, we have a zippy zippy plan. I just thought I would briefly introduce myself and then I'd just like to get a bit of an idea about who we have here today as well. Um, then I'm just going to talk about some of the positives of lockdown, which may be a rare thing for people to hear. Um, look at some of the stages in, a, in online assessing um, that I guess the kind of the model that we're following at the Edinburgh College Access Centre, um, give you a bit of insight into some of the, um, I guess, feedback that we've been getting from our students. Um, quick chat about good practice and then looking forward. So um, yeah, that's our plan. I think it's always nice to have an overview. Um, all right, oops, sorry. Okay, so this picture absolutely cracked me up. Some of you might be able to tell I am from Australia and I don't even know how I came across this, but I just had to put it in. Um, but my name's Beth Winkler for those who um, I haven't met before. Um, I'm the manager at the Access Centre at Edinburgh College. Um, I like to think of myself as an assistive tech nerd, accessibility fanat fanatic. Um, and what I just wanted to put in here as well is that I am definitely not an expert. Um, I think this has been something during this time, during this period of lockdown, you know, we've had a lot of people very anxious about using technology. Um, and I think that's the big thing is to just as easy, I know it's easier said than done, but just try not to be too anxious. Um, we just, you know, there's a lot of, of different things that we've been learning during this time. Um, but I guess what I'm kind of hoping today is to kind of outline the positives of using technology and how um, although maybe we've been kind of forced into it um, a bit, you know, using technology maybe a little bit more than we would have liked, there's definitely lots of positives to come of it. And hopefully um, we can continue using the technology once things get back to normal, as everyone loves to say. Um, I just wanted as well to get a bit of an understanding um, as to where, you know, where we're, we're from today. It's always nice to know who you're chatting to. I'm going to try and use the polling function. See if that works. It's my first time doing it. Oof. All right. So if anyone could tell me, do we have some needs assessors? Do we have some learning advisors, disability advisors? Um, Kenji, let me know if that poll isn't showing up okay. Oh yeah. It is showing up. People are answering. Great, great, great. Oh, we've got lots of others. Okay. So. I'm going to have to come out and see. Actually, Kenji, could you read out to me? Is that all right? So then I get you able to see the chat. Yes. Uh huh. Um, so uh, we have a few people saying head of JISC Scotland, North and East. Oh, yeah. That'll be Jason. Yes. Um, <laughs> I do both needs assessing and support. Uh -huh. I'm a learning support and inclusion manager. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lecturer. Yeah, great. We have a student support manager. Amazing. A lecturer. I see a theme. I am. This is good. It's good to get, you know, an idea of who's here. Another lecturer, a managed needs assessors and learner support guidance advisor. Okay, great, great. Equalities and inclusion coordinator. Mm -hmm. I think that gives you a flavor. That, that gives me an idea. All right. Um, so that's really interesting to know. So um, for those who, I guess, maybe a not 100% sure what my role is, the, the Access Centre in Brook College, we, we assess students from, um, I guess, throughout Scotland, you know, Edinburgh College and, and Napier and the Open University are certainly the ones that we see a lot of students from, um, but, you know, across Scotland as well, and especially with um, lockdown and things like that, we're no longer geographically limited as well. So um, we do the needs assessments for DSA specifically. Um, so I guess that's where my experience comes from. Okay, cool. Um, I might just leave that one. Now, the next thing I wanted to know is who feels confident about meeting their students online? This is something I'd really love to hear. Um, now, let me see if I go to this one here. Um, okay, 
great. We have lots of positives. Oh, this is good. Okay, great. Well, then hopefully I'm just preaching to the choir then during this, uh, during this talk. Okay, and we've got, we've got an I don't, which is fair. I mean, this is good. I feel good about that. Okay. All right, we've had most people vote through there. Okay. All right, I might just share that so we can keep on moving. All right, so we had a lot of, you can see the results there. Um, we have a lot of I do's, which is really good. So that's good to hear um, because I think that's been the big thing during lockdown is this kind of anxiety about moving online. Um, but I can see a couple of I don'ts. Don't panic. Hopefully I've got some good tips for you today. Okay, great. Um, and then the last one that I'd love to ask is what platforms people are using for their assessments at the minute, or if you're not, I know not everyone here is an assessor, um, but maybe perhaps how people are um, meeting online with their students, even if you're not assessing them, perhaps if you're a, a, you know, a learning advisor or a lecturer or, or what have you. I'll just launch that one there. Okay, so we're getting a lot of Microsoft Teams. Interesting, interesting. Okay, and can you can you read out what the other is in the chat box there? I I noticed that I missed out Zoom as an option. Yeah, I <laughs> ironically like enough. Zoom. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's all right. If anyone, yeah, no, that's fine. I can see. I'll, I'll end that one there. Just to keep moving along. Um, but we can see. There's a lot of people who are using Teams. So that's interesting. That's what we use at the college as well. Okay, great. Moving along, that was some really good insight. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, okay, so, you know, everyone seems very enthused about um, meeting students online, or maybe enthused is the wrong word, confident, which is great. Um, I, I wanted to put up a picture. This is my dog here who absolutely loved lockdown because um, myself, oh, sorry, I should share them. There we go. We can see that. Um, because myself and my housemate were home all the time. And so I just thought that was a good representative picture to, to demonstrate the positives of lockdown. Um, but I think when it comes from the assessor perspective or meeting students online, um, I think it's really encouraged us to gain skills that allow for choice, flexibility, and a more student-centered model. Um, so this is something where I'm, I'm actually quite, I mean, obviously not thrilled about the coronavirus and lockdown, but I feel really positive about all the different um, online skills that have come out of this time. Um, I think choice is really important when we're um, assessing students with additional support needs, you know, having this, this the old traditional model of students must come in to campus and meet us face to face is, in my opinion, absolutely wild. You know, we should be allowing if students, you know, for whatever reason are not wanting to come in and meet us face to face. Um, I think this online assessing um, is something that really offers a lot of choice and flexibility and therefore is a much more student centered model because we're looking at their needs and what they'd like as opposed to asking them to fit in with us. Oh, sorry, I continue to press that space bar. Um, so these are the four stages. So some of you might know Carol Boyle. So Carol Boyle um, does the QAing for us at the, um, at the Access Centre at Edinburgh College. Um, and these are the kind of four stages that we've worked together on um, with our assessors. So I think when you're looking at the online process, uh, this is what I would very much recommend you follow. It seems to be working quite well. So obviously it's very important that you have a look um, at that initial communication. Okay, so making sure that you agree the platform, the date and the time um, might seem quite an obvious thing, but um, I think we've, we've tried at Edinburgh College to be very, I guess, flexible with the platforms that we've offered. Um, our assessors are freelance, so perhaps they've been a bit more comfortable with using things outside of Teams. I know a lot of um, assessors who are in the college prefer to use Teams because, you know, the, the students are um, set up with that, they're set up with that, so that works quite well. Um, but it's quite common for our assessors to use even FaceTime. Um, if anyone's concerned about the privacy element of that, I've got information I can share with you later, um, which shows how you can, you know, take off your phone number or take off your email. Um, 
because I think a lot of the time if we're using platforms that students are quite comfortable with or confident with, that's just taking away an initial barrier of anxiety for the student. Um, of course, thinking about flexibility. Um, so this is something that I, I think is great, again, about online assessments as well, is that it's kind of moving away from that kind of traditional model of, you know, sitting down with the student for an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, or even two hours if they're a bit more complex, um, and allowing for, for breaks, you know, the student would like to go away and come back, you know, you might meet with them for the initial background, um, just get a bit of their background information, and then perhaps meet later on again um, to go through some of the assistive techniques demonstrations. Um, stage three, I think this is really, really important and this is one that I'm definitely working on more so at the Access Centre at the moment, is trying to give the student a bit more of an understanding as to what to expect. Um, so making sure that they feel really prepared. I'm sure, um, you know, we all here, we all work with students um, and that, you know, there's a lot of anxiety surrounding being assessed or whatever type of assessment it is, um, but a needs assessment certainly is um, no different there. Um, and I think students are very unsure, um, you know, if they're coming in and they're going to have to prove something or, you know, prove that they've got an additional support need. Um, so making sure that it's very clear um, as to what, what they will, um, or what they should expect um, for the needs assessment. Um, and then stage four there is the aftercare and feedback. Um, so what we've been doing as well is surveying the students afterwards just to check that, you know, the level of service that we're providing is, is just as good, I suppose, as face to face, but also seeing if there's anything that we can do better um, or assist them with afterwards. Um, as I'm sure everyone finds that, you know, sometimes when you're in the meeting, you can't think of anything. And then once you get out, there's all these questions that come up. So um, just to give you a bit of an understanding, I suppose, about some of the results that we've had from the survey, um, getting this feedback from our students. So we started this survey in about April and obviously this is very much, you know, summer's quite a quiet period. Um, and so we've only had 50 students who have completed the survey so far, but we've just started up again these last couple of weeks where definitely it's gotten a lot busier. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing a bit more about what students are saying as we go on uh, during this session. Um, so, I mean, makes us look very good, I have to say. So it's, it's great to share this with you. Um, but, you know, the first question that we asked was, was the purpose of the online needs assessment fully explained to you? And we got 100% yes, which is fabulous. Um, the next one that we have here is how prepared for you for the needs assessment. And sorry, in my desperation to be um, access friendly here, the captions are, are covering some of the results there. Um, but you can see we've got an average of 4.5. Um, so there's still, I think that kind of demonstrates, you've still got a few people there who weren't feeling overly prepared, perhaps a bit anxious. I mean, it is a, it, I can appreciate that it can be a bit of a stressful experience, um, you know, leading up to that needs assessment. And that is something, like I said, that we're doing. We're trying to get more forms, more information um, to send out to the students prior. Um, would you recommend being assessed online to other students? So here we had a 98% who said yes, which is great. We also had some short answer responses here. So some of the themes that were covered were things like students were saying it was more convenient, it was more efficient, effective, less stressful and private. Um, and I think there's some really positives to take out from this, you know, students for whatever reason, you know, they've got work and it's easier to fit it into work. Um, you know, just not having to travel the way, especially for Edinburgh College where, you know, our campuses are, they're not right in town. So yeah, I think there's some very positives um, to take away from that. Um, the experience was the pace or length of time adequate for the assessment. Um, and this is something I briefly touched on before that I really do think online assessments are great as they do allow for a bit of a review of the traditional assessment model, which is the, the come in, the sit down, and the very intense face to face, you know, hour or what have you time frame. Um, and I think, you know, the online just means things can be much more flexible. Again, looking at it being a much more student centered model. So ensuring, you know, the student would like to have breaks, if they'd like to come and go, um, that's, you know, perhaps works quite well for them and might even quite work, work quite well for you as well. Um, I'm thinking of all my colleagues who are learning advisors or disability advisors and are very, very busy. And I, I think that works quite well being able to break things up. Um, did the online needs assessments meet your expectations? So here we got a lovely 98% again. Um, so clear expectations, timely and detailed, thorough, very understanding and flexible. Um, and again, I think lots of positives to come out of that. And I'm happy to share um, 
the results as well. I mean, obviously I've just summarized, but if any, anyone would like to know more, just let me know. Um, so I think when we're looking at the online assessment in particular, thinking about some good practice to share. Um, I mentioned this before, again, agreeing which platform you are using. Um, and I know my assessors are using anything from FaceTime to Teams to Skype, sometimes phone, you know, we've obviously considering all the different students that we see, some students might not like to do the face to face, the phone might work better. Um, we've even had instances where um, there's been some of the, um, I guess, conversations happened over email, um, and then a bit of a phone call, um, depending on what the student would prefer. So I think flexibility um, is, is the biggest thing about this is just really seeing what the student wants and accommodating their needs. Um, of course, thinking about the invite, I guess this is a bit of a checklist that you want to go through. Um, passwords, sometimes I know with Zoom, it's really important that you're, you're um, ensuring it's locked with a password. Might not necessarily be the case with things like FaceTime or, or Teams. Um, and then, you know, just some, some checks as well, thinking about your webcam, um, thinking about things like making sure the lights on you for, for lip reading, um, these kind of things, I think they can be easy to forget, especially if you're feeling a bit stressed about getting online and meeting with the student. Um, the chat pane can be great as well uh, as extra support, as well as that face-to-face -face, um, element of, of Zoom or Teams or what have you. Um, always, you know, checking your audio. I know these are all things that people think about, but you know, I think having a bit of a checklist to go through before you meet with a student is never a bad idea. Um, and GDPR and confidentiality, okay? And I think this is a really important thing to explain to the student as well, um, and maybe in the, the preparation documents that you send to them. Um, and if you've, if you've got any questions, I think this is a big area now for a lot of colleges is, is, um, and universities, depending who we have today, is cons considering the GDPR element. So I think most people would probably have a GDPR um, officer. So just checking in with them if there's anything that you need to consider um, from that perspective. Um, now, this is something I've had a few questions about before. Um, so thinking about the assistive technology demonstrations, um, again, allowing for flexibility is key. So um, I know a lot of my um, assessors will just share the screen and kind of demonstrate the tech if they've got that there on their device. Um, a lot of students though, um, will like to sometimes go away and have a look at it. And you might've experienced that before as well um, when you've been assessing students face-to-face -face, if that was a case, or if you're a lecturer or anything and, and discussing this with a student student, you know, sometimes it's nice to be able to go away, have a bit of a play with it yourself, and then come back. And I think, again, that's a real positive of online assessments that, you know, you may, again, do the initial part of the assessment, get the background information, kind of, you know, meet the student, and then, you know, perhaps recommend some of the different AT that you think might be quite good, they can go away, and then you can meet them perhaps for a second half um, to discuss what might work, work well with them. Um, because again, I know a, a lot of people will agree with me here that you know getting that buy-in from students on AT is really important. If a student's not enthused about that assistive tech, you know, whether they're going to use it or not um, can be a bit of a gamble. So I think making sure that the student's got plenty of time to have a look through it um, and come back to you, that's again quite a positive of these online assessments. Um, so again, sorry, just another picture of Ryder here. So uh, this was my distraction throughout lockdown is I constantly had Ryder with a ball um, wanting me to stop work. And I'm sure we've all got pets or kids <laughs> or housemates or partners or whatever that sometimes, you know, it's, it's harder to be super focused. Um, so if you're continuing to work through home, I guess that's, that's a big one is minimizing distractions. Um, also thinking about um, you know, just, just don't overcomplicate things. And again, coming back to using a platform that the student's familiar with means they're going to feel more confident. Um, making sure that you have a really clear agenda, okay? I think that's, that's key to looking at the preparation, to so making sure the student's aware that, you know, they need to put aside that, that hour um, to get that assessment done or, or whatever the time frame is that you're working with. Um, preparing your system in advance, we talked about that. Um, minimizing distractions. Um, continuity, this is a really big one. Um, I think making sure when you're chatting with the student that you're 100% aware about the environment they're going to be in. I think it used to always be very straightforward. Um, the student, you know, was going into a classroom environment. Now we've got a blended learning environment. So making sure you know, you know, what classes they're taking, are they going to be done online? Will there be a face-to-face -face element? Um, and you know there really shouldn't be any any difference in the recommendations that you're making 
whether you saw the student, you know, for a face to face assessment or you saw them online. Um, it's just being aware of the environment they're going into um, for, for 2021. Um, and then, you know, I think communication is key there. So if you're an assessor, making sure you're talking with their, with their learner learning advisor, the disability advisor, um, the lecturers, um, and just making sure everyone's talking and we're aware of the environment so that the recommendations being made for that assessment um, are on point. And then, of course, conclusion, as always, making sure that students are really clear about what they're going away with um, and, you know, that they're very aware of what their next steps, their next steps are. Okay, um, so yeah, I really do. I hope that this has kind of shown assessing or, you know, meeting students in this way online um, as a positive thing. I, I really think it's also a much more sustainable model for assessors as well. Um, as mentioned, you know, this element of flexibility, sure, it's great for students, but I also think it's great for assessors. Um, I'm not sure where everyone's from today, but I know at Edinburgh College, you know, our, our learning advisors are very much under the pump um, trying to fit students in. There's always many more students than there are assessors or advisors. Um, so being able to, to meet online, again, it's much more efficient. Um, and I, I do think it's, it's something that works, although I'm, I like to think of it being very student-centered, I think it's also quite um, staff-centered as well. It's just a much more accessible way and much more inclusive. And that's me. Hopefully I've, I've fit in the time frame there. Um, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask today, but I'm always happy to be contacted as well um, on my email there. And gosh, I don't even know. How did I go? Hopefully I didn't zoom through that. Oh, I feel like I'm quite on time. All good, Ken. You are ideally on time. That's, that's <laughs> You have to come back to do more. <laughs> um, we have had a, a few questions um, in the okay. chat. Um, I might just ask each person to unmute themselves and ask. So we'll, we'll start with LE. Zero one J A. If if you'd like to unmute yourself, you could ask. Hi, hi folks, it's Julie. I'm um, up here in the Isle of Lewis, uh, UHR, Newcastle College. I, uh, I think I've worked with you before, Kenji. Comes maybe a decade ago or so, um, and just got uh, just got accessibility stuff. Um, I'll I'll tell you, I I um, I'm a lecturer, a IT lecturer, but increasingly I'm being drawn into discussions with um, Kate, who is our sort of uh, needs assessment person and mm -hmm. uh, you know, additional uh, student needs, um, looking at how assistive technology can actually help our students. Mm -hmm. And I kind of came through this because myself, I had uh, a condition which required brain surgery. So I lost some cognitive ability. So I've been able to see two sides of the coin, as it were. <laughs> so there you go. And it was a fight for a member of staff, you know, to get the assistive technology in place. So, you know, I really do feel for our students also. Um, I, I can't even remember my question. I'll have to relook at the chat. <laughs> yeah. It was about your subtitles, Bethany, because I've got a, a similar accent to you and nothing picks me up for some reason. <laughs> I know we were actually Kenji and I were talking briefly before he asked if I preferred Google or Microsoft um, subtitles. You know, the, and I was saying that Microsoft seems to be a lot better. Google often doesn't pick up my accent, which you know I, I've tried today to sound much less Australian than perhaps I normally do. Um, but yes, it it's, um, it is a struggle. It's funny that I mean, I'm, yeah. But anyway, so Microsoft seems to work quite well, and that's that's just the inbuilt one with. Um, with PowerPoint or, or, you know, what have you. Okay, okay, great. I'll, I'll give that one a go. Um, the the main question I think was uh, for students, we've got a, a, an awful lot, as we all do now, of dyslexia um, students, most of which are now coming with, with no maybe school record. Um, so this is going to pose a, a challenge for us online as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering what perhaps you could do for our what we can do for our online students in terms of assessment and making sure they they get um, the AT required, if required for them. And also we have the other um, students who aren't online at all with us who come to our construction courses, so they're more face-to-face. -face. So mm -hmm. it's getting that balance and also getting that fairness across the board, I think. Yeah. 
No, that's, that's a good question. So I think when it comes to um, SBLDs or, or dyslexia who are coming through without any medical evidence, I know that SAS have been really, really great about this and very flexible um, as to, you know, accepting perhaps things, maybe evidence that, you know, they might have been a bit more strict with what they said yes and no to before. Um, but I know certainly at Edinburgh College, what we've done is because of course, although it's great that SAS is being um, less strict, you know, it's it's important for the students to still get that um, diagnosis. So um, we're, we at Edinburgh College, we're paying for um, the ed psych, the ed psychs meeting with the student doing as much as they can. And then when we can have that face to face meeting, the student will see them afterwards. Um, so just getting whatever you can. A lot of the time, if students are coming through from school or something, they might have something previously. If they don't, if they haven't had anything previously from school, um, we've also bought at the college, um, it's called QS, which is um, like an initial test. It's, it's not enough to diagnose the student, but it's, it's like a scanner that kind of that kind of gives you a bit of an understanding and, and is enough to get the student through SAS and so that they can get their, their DSA. Um, when it comes to the fairness and things, when you know considering students um, who are face to face and online, um, I think that's where you know that's why I mentioned that thing about continuity. There shouldn't be a difference. You've got a student studying online or a student studying face to face. Just being aware of what their requirements are and in the environment that they'll be studying and um, and you know it, it's very likely that even if they are a construction worker and they've got that face to face, you know they're going to be home. They're going to have some element of homework. There'll still be AT that they'll need for their computer. Um, so I think just communication is key and having a good understanding of what that student's um, learning environment is going to be. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. okay uh, that's, we, that's good. Thanks. So we have um, just enough time for a question from Jason and then a question from Graham. So Jason, you first. Yeah, hopefully a quick one. Uh, some and probably most, I suspect, students uh, will know which platform suits them. But did you have any that had to be guided as to the possibilities as to the best one that would suit them? Um, I think there's never probably going to be a best. Um, I think it really is what suits suits best. We're finding now that students are coming, that now they're enrolled, you know, fully in the, the college, they're all set up with teams, which is what they're going to be using for their classes. So a lot of them are feeling confident about that. But like I said before, honestly, FaceTime was so successful. Students, so many students were going, um, were, were opting for that because they're just so confident with FaceTime, you know, that's what they're using all the time. Um, so a lot of our assessors were using Match. Um, or Zoom, Zoom's another good one as well. So I think, again, it's just willing to be flexible and to go with what suits the student. So um, my Pamela, who's the administrator at the centre, she just checks with the with the student first, what's the best platform, and then the assessor, and they, they have a chat and work at a time that's mutually beneficial to both, yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. Um, and Graham? Hi, everyone. Bethy, thanks very much for that. That was really interesting and uh, very well ordered and delivered. Uh, it's a comment and a question. Um, mm -hmm. I understand that Carol Boyle provided some training for your team to support them on the journey from moving from a face-to-face -face assessment to an online assessment. What sort of uh, other mechanisms as well as that did, did you provide and how well was, was that received by staff? The reason I ask this is because I subsequently lays with Carol and she's delivering the same training to my team mm -hmm. and uh, it's just really interesting how we're kind of mirroring that journey. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I think Carol, the training that Carol delivered was to our learning advisors, which I know is sometimes referred to as a, a disability advisor. Um, we, my team, are the freelance needs assessors that just do DSA, so the learning advisors often assess for the FE students um, who aren't eligible for that. Um, so I have to say my, my needs assessors, my freelance needs assessors were kind of the guinea pigs <laughs> for me coming up with different ideas at the start. And I was very impressed at how quickly they kind of, um, I guess, jumped on things and, and really adapted to the new system. Um, I guess for them, they did have that added level of flexibility because they are freelance. Um, but I think there was a lot that we were able to learn in those early days where everyone was able, you know, working things out. Um, but yeah, Carol was certainly excellent guidance. And we'd been doing some online assessments prior to lockdown just through Carol. So if we had students that for whatever reason couldn't come through, or perhaps, you know, every now and then, you know, we get a student from like Shetland or something like that and, and just, you know, there was no way they were going to come to the access centre um, down here in Edinburgh. So we we did, Carol was was great at providing guidance of what she'd already experienced as an online assessor. Um, so yeah, so that was, I guess, 
I probably can't speak 100% for the learning advisors, but we've, we've just tried to work together to make sure they have, have had as many checklists as possible to kind of follow similarly to what I've covered today, you know, with those thinking of those four stages, thinking of all the elements, um, you know, just thinking of even just basic checklists when it comes to tech and making sure everything's running smoothly. Um, but I think the key takeaway is you know, thinking of the student and, and being flexible um, because every student, you know, there's no additional support need that, that is the same across students. You know, not every student with dyslexia is the same. Therefore, not their need for an assessment is not going to be the same as well. So, yeah, hopefully that answers. Sorry, I'm, I'm terrible at a short, snappy answer. I always talk around and around, but I hope that helps. And I'm glad to hear that she's, she's helping you out, Graham, because Carol is an absolute you know, she's just, she knows everything, she's very wise. Your answer was very helpful as well, so thank you. Okay, well, <laughs> we will continue to talk around and around, um, but for those of us joining us via YouTube, unfortunately, we've just come to the end of our recorded part of the session. So thanks for joining us. Um, please do join us for a future session. Um, but until then, please uh, stay safe. And thanks, Bethany. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. Thank you. <laughs>